The title of this one is how to receive powerful raw miracles. Very important and strategic moment. And uh, I want you to listen to me under a spirit-led atmosphere. Let your mood or mind be calm in the presence of the Holy Spirit. As we go through this, everyone that is called of God needs the power of God for effective operation and fulfillment of their purpose or ministry. Work for which God has called you. And when you are called of God, know that you are called into a ministry, okay? Every ministry requires power. And know that you are called into workings. There are several workings, okay? Diversity. All by the same spirit. So, we need power to be able to do whatever it is that we've been called for. Whether as a pioneer of a company or a pioneer of a church or pioneer of a family or uh, an associate, of any of these because Joshua was an associate at first Aaron was an associate Miriam was an associate Peter was an associate Timothy was an associate Titus was an associate Paul even was an associate of Barnabas but all of them all the same had the need of power whether as a pioneer as an associate you need the power power will sustain you to live long, live long not just to perform but as well to live long enough to fulfill the purpose of which you've been called. So that being said, let's look at what it takes here to access the power of God and do raw miracles because you need to do raw miracles. As Mark chapter 16 verse 20 said, that they went everywhere, the apostles now, referring to them, preaching the word and God confirming the word with miracles following. The disciples came in Matthew chapter 10, all of Matthew 10 right there preaching the word but what was the evidence that somebody sent them the power that followed mark chapter 6 verse 12 and 13 what was the evidence that they were sent at all from verse 1 before we saw the miracles the thing is that these people saw the miracles so they knew somebody sent them so if indeed somebody sent you and that person is god if you were called at all then you need raw miracles i mean mighty miracles to buttress the point that the word of god at your mouth is true that was what they certified with the told the prophet elijah after elijah had raised her dead son back to life she said now i know you are a man of god and that the word of god at your mouth is true so the first point we're looking at here in how to receive the power for raw miracles is very, very a simple issue. Power has got three levels. Take note of this. What you don't take note of is what literally makes things to sleep out of you. Power has got three levels or got levels. Let me say that. The first point is power has got levels. We don't all operate at the same level or depth of the power of God. And one of my good or favorite who are explaining this is Ezekiel's swimming lesson in Ezekiel chapter 47, where Ezekiel brought, I was brought in the spirit, that's in a vision by an angel. He said, the man brought me and then measured a thousand cubits and I stepped into the water. And then he said, the water was at my ankle. Get that? That's ankle level of the anointing or power of God. At this level, yes, you feel some power because you were not there before. So you feel like you've already got some power. You feel the Holy Spirit born again. You feel like you're called. And at the ankle level, there are things that you can do here. Then the next thing is said, the man went for that and measured another 1,000 cubit of the water and I went in. And it was my man Niels. That's knee level of the power of God. Operation. That you've accessed. Then he said, the next thing is that the man went for that and then measured another 1,000 cubit ultimately said that it was so deep that you can't go over but you need to swim at the final stage of the swimming lesson of ezekiel the prophet that's a swimming level of the anointing this is where literally everything is possible so when you see men at the height of it in ministry and you see them doing all kinds of miracles they are at the swimming level or swimming depth of the power of god that corresponds with swimming depth of the anointing so power has got levels and that's why when you it comes to confronting demons satanic territories and satanic gates principalities and powers you need to know which level you are operating with in terms of the power of god before you come to confront certain things you need the power of god that resonates or levels up with that level or places you above the realm of demonic oppression in people's life that you want to confront and the deliver have them delivered from satanic oppressions in the process let's move to our next uh, point here power is gotten in three ways 
Point number two, power is cutting three ways. The first is impartation. I can, as somebody who operates with the power of God, I've seen the blind seeing as I ministered the gospel. I've seen the dumb mouth speaking. You get that? Bearing wombs opened and even the dead raised back to life as I minister the word of God. And the power of God is resting upon me i can lay my hand on you for impartation that was what paul literally did when a lady sends upon the disciples he met in acts of the Apostles chapter 19 from verse 1 to 11 after he had baptized them a lady sent on them and they were filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues when he asked them in the first place in verse 1 have you received any holy spirit since you believed you know paul looked at how wretched they are they were now people without power in the gospel, it's like cobra punishment, manual labor. They look will look definitely wretched. Power changes your countenance. The apostles became more handsome in that sense when the power came upon them than when it was not. And remember that even ar long, around Jesus Christ, it was something that helped them. But think about the moment Jesus left them. These guys were hiding. Were they hiding when they were with Jesus? They were hiding because they were wretched, helpless. When the power came, they had the boldness. That uh, corresponds with how handsome they also looked as a result in the process. So power comes by impartation through hand laying or handing over of anointed materials. I've seen many people taking my mantle, even the barren, receiving a mantle, handkerchief from my hand, and they begin to manifest under the power of the Holy Spirit, rolling and screaming, and eventually they come back with a testimony a month or two later. They're pregnant, tested positive. After many years of barrenness, a lot of things like cancer, you know, diabetes, ulcer, and all of those things. I've watched people receiving healing just by touching a mantle that I bless. That's impartation. If you were to receive my mantle, lay it on yourself and be healed. Or take a mantle handkerchief from me, lay it on everybody who is sick and they get healed. It's impartation that has happened in the process. So that's one way it comes. Number two way it comes is by transfer. That was what happened between Elijah and Elisha. Complete transfer. And he must satisfy the conditions. Elisha did. And God was willing to have a transfer. So everything on Elijah was transferred upon him, even double in this case. So somebody can have whatever these men have replicated. Bishop David Udupo repeatedly said that everything Kenneth E. Hagin had was replicated upon me. He said, I needed humility. And that humility cannot be born from man. This one is something given to a man by God. And God said, go meet Enoch Adeboye. Papa Enoch Adeboye of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. He went there, he got it. And he said, that was what God told me. He said, I needed wisdom to do this thing. And God said, go meet that man. Let him lay, let, let, let him lay his hands on you. And the man prayed for him. So transfer can happen. I mean, complete transfer. What that man has completely transfers upon you. That's a transfer. Third way you can get access to the power of God is by direct empowerment. In which case, there may be no need of human means or involvement in empowering you by God. God can on his own decide to empower you without passing through anybody to do that. In most cases, or in some cases, you see, Apostle Paul apparently said, or openly saying that my gospel was not received from man. And he talked about when he met Peter and the other apostles. He said, when he called me, I went to the island of uh, a church, stayed there for three years. Now, with God alone, building this man and furnishing him to that person, he didn't learn how to raise the dead from Peter's prayers. Peter did not lay hand on Apostle Paul to, be, to raise the dead. Paul raised the dead. You get that? He didn't learn how to uh, cast out demons from Apostle Peter, who was the head of the Gentile uh, ministry. No, not from any of the apostles. It was given to him directly. God empowered him directly. Trust that is understood there. That's a third way that power comes. So which way is God building you for? You need to check it out. Sometimes you want a man to lay hands on you to be imparted. God says no. At other times, you don't want it, but God seems to be pushing you to somebody. And that will be determined by the kind of anointing that you are operating, kind of operation that you have been given. Are you a kingly, are you meant for the kingly anointing or you are meant for the priestly anointing? That will also be a part of this matter. Are you a chosen or are you a called? That will also determine this matter. These are things you need to set out for yourself. The last thing we're going to be looking 
at here when we talk about power is execution uh, that is the, the execution i want to put it in a better way third thing here is exercising the power is it is the key thing if you ever are going to operate with a raw power for mighty manifestations or mighty miracles you execute you exercise that power you have asked for in faith mark 11 23 24 say therefore whatsoever thing ye desire ask believe you have received and do not, and not and if you don't doubt then you will receive so if you believe you've received step up and exercise the power that's how you know it is there that's how you get it done so faith without work is dead you've got a faith that's good but you have to put it to work that's the point here very very important so step out use the power for what you asked to do with the power before the power was given to you so sometimes you may never know that the power has been deposited onto you exercise the power of god that has been given to you and caution power is contagious power is fiery the power of god is full of fire jesus of pentecost his holy spirit came down upon the apostles and they were all greeted with a tongue of fire on their head a man with power definitely will burn with power with fire 24 hours in a day seven days in a week even when you are sleeping the fire is still burning demons are trying to walk around or pass through where you are found or laying down to sleep they are in trouble you can be sitting down on a seat you rise up somebody will sit, sit down there and get healed somebody can touch the plate that you just use for eating and get a miracle in the process you know everything you touch literally commands miracle because power is highly contagious just like pandemic killer, killer diseases like even more contagious than than the recent COVID-19. That's what I'm trying to say. Airborne diseases are the most contagious, right? Power is more contagious than that. You can't meet a man with power and not contract or feel the effect of power because power does cannot hide. The power of God cannot hide. So right now, as you're listening to me, you are being agitated by faith to receive the power. And somehow you're already contacting the power. You can't listen to me and not be on fire yourself practically impossible so as you're listening to me be imparted with power right now to do crazy miracles that ministry god has called you to must come alive with fire the nations are waiting for you and that's exactly what god's doing through you go take the nations i commend results born from the exercising of the power of god in your ministry let the dead be raised back to life let the cripples begin to walk the blind begin to see and the dead all kinds of miracles begin to happen in Jesus' mighty name. Like it happens in our ministry where you see um, uh, people that have got cancer being healed as if this is just nothing. The same thing is going to be happening with you. From this day forward in Jesus' mighty name. I want to introduce you to my certificate course in anointing and supernatural operation. As you listen to me right now, take the WhatsApp contact right in front of you on this screen or in the pinned comment section on YouTube of the Apostle Ramon Ida Ministries below this video and contact the Apostle Ramon Ida Ministries and sign up right away for my certificate course in anointing and supernatural operations and as I mount, mentor you step by step into how to operate in the power of God. I've also done some relevant videos here on this platform on YouTube that you will need for further studies. The uh, first on the list is the one I call How to Raise the Dead, where I dissected the uh num the dead body cases of the dead bodies raised back to life and who did what and how those things happen you see that here on this platform on youtube and you also look out for my video titled here raw power for mighty manifestations check it out and your life in ministry and in work with god the quest for power will not remain the same again warning never go to the devil and search for power to serve the lord it's fake and it will not get you there god has everything you need get it the right way once and for all finish fight a good fight of faith here on it do great and crazy miracles and finally go there to meet with him god bless you see you in the next video